Well, I have to tell you that um, it is truly an honor and a privilege for me to be here. Um, I really want to thank the faculty of IT for inviting me. I want to thank um, Tatra Bank for sponsoring me. But most of all, I want to thank all of you for coming and uh, leading me to believe that I really have something to say. <laughs> okay? So, what we're going to talk about today is web science. Now, I believe that every so often in history, some phenomena comes along for it's necessary to invent a new science to describe that phenomenon. And even though I am prejudiced, 20 years ago, that phenomenon, I think, is the web. And really, the very short definition of what web science is, is for us to try to understand what is this thing that we call the web. Now, I have a few caveats that I want to make at the very beginning, and um, that is, some of you may be familiar with the Web Science Trust. Uh, I am a collaborator with the Web Science Trust, but what I say today about Web Science is not speaking for the Web Science Trust. It's actually my particular feelings and opinions about Web Science and the importance of Web Science and hopefully getting some of you to come up with some ideas about getting involved with web science. Um, quickly, what the Web Science Trust started off as, I won't go through this in any detail, was a memorandum of understanding between MIT and the University of Southampton to really talk about, to try to bring together people whose disciplines uh, or affected by the web and whose disciplines affect the web. Um, and it's been very successful in doing that. In fact, the next web science conference is next week. Okay? So, um, it has gone through several iterations. Uh, it started off as WISRI, the Web Science Research Initiative, and now it's the Web Science Trust. And actually, it made a fair amount of news several weeks ago because the Prime Minister allocated 30 million pounds toward web science research. So that certainly suggests that some people in certain positions really think that studying the science of the web is a worthwhile initiative. Okay, so before we ask what is web science, I have to sort of take you on a little path. This is the way I do things. Try to come up with a with a good, exciting climax for all of this. So, before we ask what is web science, we're going to do something very simple and say, what is the web? And what's a better place to ask what the web is than Wikipedia? Now, you go to Wikipedia and it says, the web is a system of interlinked hypertext documents access. Uh-oh, so let's stop right there. I mean, this is obviously computer science talk. This is geek talk, right? Because all of us have our own perceptions about what the web is, and in most cases, those perceptions are not identified by that definition that you see there. And the interesting thing to me when we say that we have our own perceptions about the web, it's, it's interesting to me that we think about it as a noun. We think about it as an entity. Right? So we surf the web. We get on the web. We put things on the web. We get things from the web. Now, why are we thinking about it in that way? Because we certainly don't think about it that way in terms of some other applications. We don't think about putting things on email. What is it that is special about the web? that we feel as though we have a unique relationship with it. Um, so once again, if we go back to some other definitions, you can say that it's a document delivery system. 
That's one. That's all of these are legitimate definitions. It's a tool for collaborative writing. It's a platform for e-commerce. It's a network and computing system. And then at the end, if you're a mathematician, you can think about the web in terms of its topology. So a lot of different people, depending upon disciplines, have their own definitions. So you really understand that you cannot take this thing and really define a definition or give a definition that is suitable for all. And as I said, you know, if you're in computer science, you think about its infrastructure. If you're in information science, you think about the data and how the data that you can get in the web can be turned into knowledge. You can think about it in terms of its social intelligence. Certainly that's one of the directions in which the web is currently leading. And then if you're thinking about the applications, perhaps first and foremost, one of the ones that stands out in your mind is e-commerce. So once again, those are all legitimate perspectives of the web. Now, what about to users? If you're a web surfer, you know, the web to you is just sort of a great collection of websites where you can do a lot of exploring, find a lot of new interesting things. That's what the definition of the web to you. If you're a shopper, then all of a sudden I say that the web becomes the world's largest shopping mall. You know, you can buy whatever you want on the web. And you can do whatever level of comparison shopping you want to do on the web. Um, if you're a searcher, then your perspective of the web is just the list of search results that you get from, an ink, from a system such as Google. If you're into tagging, then to you the web is simply a collection of tags. If you're a blogger, they even have their own term now. They refer to the blogosphere. So that's their perception of the web. And if you're in Facebook, then your world on the web is defined by your interests and your friends, your calendar, and those kinds of things. So, Every one of these perspectives that users have of the web, or the, the technical perspective of the web, they're all right. They're all correct. So this basically says is that we don't really have a firm understanding of what the web is to everyone. Now, so that's the web. Now I get even more philosophical here, <clears throat> and I say, well, what is science? And here's a definition from the British Science Council. It says, science is the pursuit of knowledge and the understanding of the natural and social world following a systematic methodology based on evidence. No, oh, that's a very good definition. <clears throat> but the issue is, how can we take that definition and possibly apply it to understanding the web? But interesting to me, if you note on here, you know, it says, social world, and we're talking about science, I like this quote from Sir Isaac Newton. He says, I can calculate the motions of heavenly bodies, but not the madness of people. Because he got caught in his times equivalent of the top combust. So acknowledging here, too, is that science and social are two very different things. And it's very difficult to understand, even for somebody like Newton, the relationship between them. Here's a definition that I like, too. I'm not going to read these all to you in this, but scientists think of science both as a process for discovering properties and the resulting body of knowledge, whereas most people seem to think science as an authority that provides some kind of information. Well, how do we apply authority to what the way in which we want to understand or the way that we want to influence the web? 